Hi, and welcome back for another Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In this episode, we'll be covering the first four episodes of the newly released anime, Management of the Novice Alchemist. Sarasa is a young girl who wishes to become a master-level alchemist and get a shop just like her parents, who were killed by bandits. Despite the turn of events, Sarasa works hard and gets her own shop in the middle of nowhere, with the help of her master. She must now fight through the real-life challenges that come her way and show her potential as the new Novice Alchemist. Before we begin, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you never miss an update from us. Dramatic music has us all on the edge of our chairs as we are met with the spectacle of a young girl in front of three judges. The young girl looks rather nervous with her wits at the end. It looks more like an execution than an exam, we believe. The girl nervously holds onto her star necklace and tells herself how this practical exam means everything to her and all her five years of hard work. If she passes, then she will finally become an alchemist. Flashback time. We're taken into a distant memory of little Sarasa, who recalls seeing her parents getting ready to take some goods for transportation. Sarasa waves goodbye to her parents and waits for them to come back, while she starts drawing pictures of them together with her. The next thing we know, the head clerk barges into the house, face filled with sorrow and fear. He tells Sarasa that her parents have been killed by bandits while they were transporting the goods. This sends shockwaves down Sarasa, who stands with sadness in front of her parents' graves. Behind her, we could see two men with devilish looks on their faces, holding a contract and a forged signature right below it. Sometimes the evil of some people really surprises all of us. Sarasa is made to live in an orphanage, and the hurt she goes through is beyond measure for us. Despite the heavy loss, Sarasa spends all her time in the orphanage studying to become an alchemist. One day, the orphanage gets a surprise visit from an alchemist who used to once stay in the same orphanage. She comes to give a donation to them. Sarasa is quick to question the alchemist if she can one day also become like her. To which the alchemist tells her that if she works hard and is really focused, then she can one day become like her. We get to learn Sarasa's true intention to become an alchemist, and it's to one day become so rich she can, like her parents, also own her own shop. Looks like the bandits stole her parents' shop after their death with the forged signature. With that one big goal in mind, Sarasa joins the Royal Alchemist Academy to make her dreams come true, and so begins her journey journey of painful long hours of studying, managing experiments, making no friends, and balancing part-time work to pay off her academy expenses. However, she does happen to meet a master alchemist named Ophelia Millis, who takes her under her wing as an apprentice. Thus, the five years flow by like water, and just a day is left before the major exam that will determine her future as an alchemist. One usually is busy studying all the time, when their one major exam is just a day away, but not little Sarasa, who instead pays a visit to her master master and Miss Maria in their shop. Maria gives Sarasa a nice trim, since all her hair is covering her eyes, and with a few words of confidence, Ophelia sends her to bed. The big day has come and their written exams begin. After the written exam, which was quite easy, it's now time for the major test, and that is the practical exam. The girls stand outside the big hall for their turn. A girl comes out, eyes bulging and her face petrified as if she's seen a ghost. She mutters to herself about how she messed up and her life is ruined. It's Sarasa's turn to take the practical exam. In the hall, she stands in front of three judges and is asked to make an intermediate level potion using the ingredients in front of her. Keeping herself calm, Sarasa tries to look through the ingredients in front of her, but not seeing the ones she wants, she panics. Despite the mini heart attack, she manages to keep her composure and recalls Ophelia's teachings and instead cooks up a high-level potion. The potion requires a lot of magic and effort, but Sarasa perfectly executes it and thus, after completing the spell, falls on her knees in total weakness. Her judges are surprised by the perfect high-level potion and happily graduate her. At the graduation ceremony, everyone celebrates with their friends, unlike Sarasa, who has no friends, but still happily celebrates the fact that she now is a certified alchemist. She pays a visit to her master and Maria, who celebrate over her finally becoming an alchemist. The first thing Sarasa requests from her master is to purchase the Alchemy Works volumes, which have all the alchemy techniques recorded into them, and it doesn't come cheap. 
In fact, it costs over $5 million to get the complete volumes. But not to worry, Sarasa has been saving up for five years, and now, after graduation, can finally get her hands on them. Talk about determination. Ophelia is happy at her consistency and offers her a job to work under the master with good pay. A bit taken aback by this amazing offer, Sarasa declines and instead chooses to get real-world experience. They visit the store to get the volumes, and well, the mountainous pile of books looks intimidating to little Sarasa. Ophelia comes to the rescue and gives her a magic purse that can take up all the books and not be heavy at all. With that out of the way, it's now time to go job hunting, and yet again, Ophelia plays a major role to guide her apprentice for the best option. Purchasing a small shop in the middle of nowhere, Ophelia shows complete confidence in her apprentice over her ability to not only manage the shop, but also run it perfectly. The pros and cons circle around poor Saras's head, who feels like everything is going too far, but with trust in her master that she chose the best option for her, Sarasa accepts it. A celebratory dinner is thrown for Sarasa, who just can't help but be happy with everything that has gone around. The day comes for Sarasa to take on the month-long journey all the way to Gelba Roja Mountain, a town where her so-called amazing shop is located. On arriving, her heart drops when she sees the shop is in ruins, plants growing all over the place and broken windows. This challenge just keeps getting worse and worse. Despite all that, she must fight through the challenges and come out on top. The look of utter despair creeps over the little alchemist's face, who sees the signboard on her shop fall. Well, it can't be that bad, can it? A young girl stares at the alchemist from behind a tree and runs away. Nevertheless, Sarasa doesn't lose hope and straightens herself up and recalls her master's words of trust and confidence in her abilities. Making big plans to set the shop up right, Sarasa gets to work and starts off by separating the medicinal herbs from the weeds in the yard. Next, she explores her humble yet obsolete shop, which happens to have a magic crystal that is the core to the seal. And just like that, in seconds, the interior of the house is magically clean. Well, that certainly has saved her from a day's work. There is also a security seal in the house. Apart from that, she notices that there are more herbs in the field with a well that hasn't fully dried fate seems to work in her favor. With all of that checked, it's now time to buy furniture. Sarasa goes into town for this and meets a young, beautiful girl who is even more mesmerized to see the alchemist. The young girl, whose name is Loria, is the same one who was spying over Sarasa a few moments ago. The overjoyed girls exchange positive vibes, with Loria giving discounts to her for the purchases. She also introduces her to Ella, who, like a motherly figure, shows her around town. We also notice that Ella has a habit of smacking people's backs. Ella introduces her to the town's carpenter, who gives Sarasa a very mean-looking glare and is about to charge her for the bed that she wants, but stops midway when an even more stern-looking Loria gives him a look and instead changes his mind and gives it to her as a housewarming gift. They also visit the mayor and ironsmith. With the main introductions out of the way, they enter an inn where it seems Ella is quite the member of. The innkeeper welcomes them both with open arms, and after noticing the passion of Sarasa, couldn't help but offer her food and drinks as a welcome gift. That night, Sarasa, while cooking up potions, has a tornado of thoughts finding it difficult to socialize, and also the challenges that she will face in the future to win the trust of the people. All these thoughts send her to sleep and wake up the next morning to the sound of the doorbell ringing. She stumbles down the stairs in a rush to open the door and finds that her master has come all the way from the capital to see her. What's even more surprising is the fact that it took her three days to come, unlike her, who took over a month to travel. Nonetheless, her master's visit is to see if Sarasa isn't crying her eyes out for being so far away, and is happy to see the shop in good condition. Ophelia decides to teach her sword fighting since she does need basic fighting skills and hands her a sword. Sarasa pounces on her master but is sent flying off. The two duel till the sun sets and later feast on Miss Maria's cooking which tastes heavenly. Ophelia explains her true purpose for the visit which was to create a transfer circle to send over ingredients to the capital or receive ingredients. After which she rushes back to the capital otherwise Maria would nag her for being away too long. Her master her master's departure makes her feel really hurt and lonely, and so, with tears in her eyes, she falls asleep. The next morning, Sarasa is surprised to see the town folk out in her front yard, waiting for her. It seems Ella has really gone and chewed each and everyone's head out to help the young girl. The positivity and accepting atmosphere gives hope and happiness to the alchemist. Sarasa even goes as far as to ask Loria to stay and work with her, which she happily agrees to. In the night, the two chat and bathe together, which isn't 
isn't at all suspicious. It's just two young girls bathing, right? They also sleep together in the same bed. Finally, the shop is complete with all the ingredients, and the moment they open the shop, they receive their first customer. A group of worried faces barge into the shop, pleading for help. One of the men is carrying an unconscious girl on his back, and it seems her hand is cut off. How will the novice alchemist solve this? The alchemist tends to the wounds of the unconscious and beaten up girl, whose name the gatherer calls Iris. It seems the right arm has been cut off, the left covered with burns, and the body filled with poison. Sarasa inspects everything and says it will cost a lot to save the girl's life, which angers the gatherers who feel that she is prioritizing money rather than life. However, Kate, who came with the group, scolds the gatherers and tells them it's their fault Iris lies in this situation in the first place. Sarasa gets to work and quickly uses her best potions and medicines to first attach her arm back and then remove all the poisons that are in her body. The men show more anger over Sarasa using expensive potions to cure their friend. They are escorted out of the house by Andre, who was the guard that carried Iris, after telling them it's her right to ask for payment for the service to save a life. With the disgruntled men out of the house, Sarasa can now work in peace and asks Kate how this happened, to which we find find out that they came across a hellflame grizzly that breathes out fire and has four arms. After a lot of effort and potions, she manages to save Iris's life, which was a race against time, and now is given space to rest. At night, Sarasa thanks Loria for her assistance and fast thinking when the situation required it. She further explains to her how she must be strict when it comes to the expenses, otherwise she could never manage a shop. Nonetheless, Iris finally gains consciousness and wakes up the next morning to thank Sarasa for her help to save her life. They ask her for the total and are left speechless when they find out it's a lot. But our little alchemist reassures them that they can pay in installments. She also asks them about where they had come across the grizzly, to which the gatherers say it was very close to the village. Not fearful at all, Sarasa makes preparations to collect ingredients near the location of the grizzly, which alarms everyone in the house. That's our alchemist, who has been taught by the best master. Her confidence isn't just for show, as Sarasa boasts about her excellent sword training, given to her by her master. But it seems Iris and Kate don't believe her and are willing to back their savior in her expedition to hunt the bear. They go bear hunting and, well, believe it or not, but Sarasa, with one mighty kick, knocks the bear down in seconds, ending its life. Looks like she didn't even need the help of her sword for this. After the heroic act, she gets to work on dissecting the bear, pulling its liver and intestines out before going for the eyes, where she stops dead in her tracks. It seems the bears are going through a stage known as grizzly frenzy where, due to a shortage of their food, known as flame stones, they go berserk and attack nearby towns. Sarasa brings this into the knowledge of the mayor, who loses his wits out of fear, since they are a small town and do not have many fighters. But Sarasa gives him hope and promises to help along with the other villagers who stand by her side. With just a few days on their hands, they get to work and build a fence to trap the bears using their food to attract them. Ella's husband, Jasper, hides in the forest to keep a watch out when the bears will be approaching their village. Everything is in place. Now it's just time to patiently wait for the bear's arrival. The horn is called out, alerting the people of the bear's arrival. Over 20 bears are making their way towards them, not at a fast pace, but certainly at an angry one. The villagers scramble from left to right at the very sight of the monstrous beings. These bears do, however, start to follow the trail of food in the fence, but get diverted on seeing the villagers in front of them. Towering over the poor villagers, they almost gobble their heads out, until Sarasa comes to the rescue and slays the bear. It's now man against beast. The beasts attack the villagers who now produce their swords and axes to fight them off. Iris is not one to shy away during such moments and shows her honorable fighting skills as she cuts off two bears at once. Just like that, the villagers succeed in killing off the beasts that were terrorizing their lives. The fight is not over yet. In the distance, Sarasa could hear the distress signal used by Loria. It seems she's in trouble. Rushing over to the shop, she finds two beasts have entered it and are moments away from completely turning Loria into mincemeat. Anger boiling inside of her, Sarasa slashes off each beast in seconds, not letting them lay a single claw on her companion. The fight has ended and Loria embraces Sarasa with a warm hug, happy over her intelligence and for saving her life. But it seems Sarasa has used up the maximum of her powers and so falls down unconscious into Loria's arms. Being an alchemist is not an easy job. The 
enormous amount of energy used by Sarasa to fight the beasts lands her in bed and unable to even hold a glass of water without her whole body aching like crazy. She gets a visit by Iris and Kate, who bring her nourishing berries to bring her back to her feet. To this, Sarasa asks them to stay with her and help gather important ingredients and bring her business back on top, which is really impressive since we now see a business side to the young alchemist. They explore the village and are hurt to see the damage left by the beasts who have burned many houses. However, it isn't as damaging as the huge hole left by the bears in Sarasa's shop. Yet despite that, she still opens her shop and sees the situation as an opportunity rather than a loss to help the villagers during these desperate times. Furthermore, she also hangs a sign outside promoting a 50% discount to anyone who brings back used potion bottles. Sarasa still thinks of more ways to double her profits and so pays a visit to the mayor. She asks him about the proceedings of the grizzly bear parts and if they're being handled well. She also wishes to sell off the parts and take 40% for herself and give the rest to the villagers and Andre's team who didn't run away when they needed them. The mayor rejects the proposal and says Sarasa fully deserves all of it since she fought almost half of them by herself. He does request that she leave the meat and pelts to them, which they would sell to pay off the damages. She agrees to not only help in selling the meat and pelts, but also gives all the money to them. Thus begins her journey to a town in the south called Straug, which takes her probably a few hours from the help of her running ability, which she learned from her master. Seeing the town of Straug, Sarasa is speechless. The town has everything that she wants, from bakeries to trendy cafes, but let's not get distracted. We find out there are two alchemy shops in the town, so Sarasa visits the nearest one. The spooky cold interior of the alchemist shop really intimidates her, and what's even more scary is the sly-looking alchemist sitting in it. Sarasa shows him the ingredients, and he's quick to call them old and not worthwhile, while throwing in a price that isn't even worth it. Pissed off, she leaves for the next shop. To her delight, she is met by a very happy and accepting woman at the counter who offers her a hefty amount for them. This boosts her morale, and the two sit together and chat about her place in the village as a new alchemist. Sarasa also shows her a list of ingredients that she needs and how they can create a business relationship with each other. This all seems pretty reasonable for Leonora, who is more than willing to start trading with her. She also requests her to stay the night since she must be exhausted with the long journey, and Sarasa happily agrees. Early in the morning, Sarasa makes her way back to the village with a bag of money and sweets from Leonora. The village looks so peaceful and serene with everyone sleeping or working. She meets her friends who are either busy doing repairs to the shop or practicing swordsmanship. Loria suggests to Sarasa that they must make a kitchen so that she can cook for them. Thanks to the villager's carpenter, they get a magic stove made for them, as well as furniture. On their way back, carrying the magic stove, they come across Mrs. Delel who sees the stove and asks the price. This is when Sarasa's business skills hit. They return back home and set up the stove. By then, Mrs. Delal pays a visit and orders two magic stoves. Guess business is booming for our little apprentice. Nonetheless, it seems everyone is very satisfied and happy with Sarasa, who has brought about a magical change to the atmosphere of the village. Sarasa can't believe that they all have accepted her with open arms. At the shop, she has a proper family with Loria, Iris, and Kate. Nothing felt so perfect and wonderful for Sarasa than this precious moment that she will always cherish. The main challenge is still there for the young alchemist, and that is if she will be able to survive the challenges that will surely come her way. Will Sarasa be able to retrieve her parent's shop that was stolen by bandits? Will she return back to the capital and become a master level alchemist? We'll find out in the next couple of episodes of Management of a Novice Alchemist. And if you're a subscriber with notifications enabled, you'll find out soon enough.